Okay, so in this video, I'll talk about ABCs of machine learning. So if you're a newbie to machine learning and want to know what it is, you know, let's try to understand through this video. Okay, uh, machine learning, you know, nowadays machine learning is a hot topic, but uh, uh, what is the history? The history is as follows. In 1959, machine learning, the term was coined uh, by this gentleman, Arthur Samuel. Right. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, this person is Tom Michel, who is really very popular in machine learning circles. In fact, he is, he, he, uh, you know, he's known for his contributions to the advancement of this field. Okay. So now, you know, if you want to learn ML, what is ML? You know, is it a new branch of science or is it like, um, is it like derived from other branches of sciences and so on? Is it uh, really, you know, programming or maths and so on? Right. So, well, machine learning does involve a whole bunch of math topics. So, you know, linear algebra, probability, theory and statistics, multivariate calculus, algorithms and complexity, and other kind of topics, uh, basically like optimization and so on. Okay. So here's a rough distribution of the, in, of the knowledge that you must have in these topics so as to do machine learning. Okay. But hey, machine learning is not pure statistics or pure maths. So essentially, you don't need to have a very deep, deep uh, you know, understanding of these topics. You just need to know them somewhat. Okay. Now, uh, that said, many people can do machine learning without knowing these topics also. Uh, so if you are just a machine learning practitioner, it's okay if you do not know m many of these, right? But if you know these, you can actually understand what's going on underneath much better. Okay. So uh, just to sort of define machine learning properly, it is the scientific study of algorithms and statistical models that computer systems use to effectively perform a specific task without using explicit instructions, relying on patterns and inference instead. Okay. Now, now that's a very large definition and let's sort of understand it piece by piece in this video. Right. So first of all, it's a scientific study of algorithms. So it's a science kind of thing. And you know, it, it is about some algorithms and statistical models. So you call them as models. And uh, so model is nothing but uh, some sort of a summary derived from the data and some sort of knowledge derived from some data that the, mo that the machine has seen. Okay? That computer systems use to effectively perform a specific task. Now the machine learning algorithm for one task will not work straight off for the other task. So you know these models are built for a particular task in mind without using any explicit instructions. So the nice point is that, uh, you know, even software engineers do some tasks, they code up for some tasks, right? But they are told what to, you know, how to basically perform that task. But in machine learning, the machine learning engineer is not told how to perform the task. In fact, the machine learning engineer learns from the data how this task can be best done. Okay. Relying on patterns and inference instead. So the machine learning engineer really tries to figure out patterns and extracts these rules or, or extracts these instructions that define the task properly. Right? So you'll understand this better using an example on the next slide. Okay. So it is seen as a subset of artificial intelligence. So if you have heard AI, well, ML is a subset of AI. Okay. Machine learning algorithms build a mathematical model based on sample data. So as we said, we are going to build models, some sort of a representation, compressed representation, knowledge representation of the data, okay? known as training data, in order to make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed to perform the task. So, so the guy who is doing, going to do machine learning is not going to program them specifically, uh, but still really going to come up with an automatically generated program. Okay? So now to differentiate, you know, you might be confused. Yeah, hey, how is machine learning different from a software engineering perspective, right? So in software engineering, you know, most software engineers practically do this, you know. Uh, they either create views or controllers or models, okay? So, so the model here is, by the way, different from the machine learning model. But let's understand what a top typical software engineer does. Software is rules-based. They write rules in some senses. So meaning you define a set of rules on how things work. Okay? And then the software just does the same exact thing over and over and over. So you, know, you write software because you want to do some task repeatedly. Okay? But you define the rules upfront that, hey, these are the rules that I'm going to follow uh, to, to, in, in this software. Okay. This is a typical, uh, a typical structure commonly used in modern software, this structure. Okay. Uh, you have three kinds of code. One that shows things, so view, the visualization aspect of the software. Okay. One that defines things, so it basically defines. So here there is a model, but it's a rule-based model, so to say. It defines how the flow will happen. Okay. Uh, and one that decides what happens between the two. So essentially there is a controller thing that basically controls when to visualize, what to visualize, and uh, uh, you know, uh, what input to give to the model and therefore what output to show and so on. Okay. 
So uh, in this kind of structure, there are two ways uh, uh, explicit rules are imposed, the model itself and the business logic, so to say. So whatever people call as business logic is sort of encoded in this model and, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and also the controller. So basically, you know, business logic sits out there. Okay? Business logic is the fancy word for if this happens, then do that. So the, the are practically rules, if else kind of rules. Okay? Now, how is ML different from software engineering, right? So as I said, software engineer writes his own logic or the BI, right? The business logic, okay? And codes of the software. Now, he uses data to test logic. So, you know, some of you might have done unit testing. Uh, so, uh, essentially, after the code is written, you basically have a set of unit tests and you run them across the, uh, you know, uh, against the code so as to verify if the code is working fine or not, as expected, okay? Machine learning engineer does not write his own logic. In fact, he learns, he finds out patterns from the data, so he needs some training data available uh, to be available, right? So software engineer does not need any training data. The data, some small amount of data is used for testing the logic. But machine learning engineer needs data to start off with, okay? He uses this data to learn patterns and then generates code rather than writing it. So he doesn't really know any business logic, nobody knows. In fact, the data tells the business logic. So there's a way by which, you know, from the data you derive those patterns and therefore write the business logic automatically, generate the business logic. You don't write it, in fact, right? He uses data to learn the model, okay? So uh, example is as follows, you know? Let's say that you have some data from the income tax department saying that, you know, these 10 guys, they filled their income tax returns, you know, uh, so the, and there are like four different things about these guys. So whether refund was due or not, when he filed the return, he or she filed the return, marital status of the person, taxable income, and whether this person cheated or not while filing the return. Okay. Now, uh, you know, a 20 years experienced person at income tax office would have some sort of this structure in his brain, right? So as to figure out if this guy who has just uploaded the written has cheated or not. Okay. And uh, by the way, these kind of systems, this kind of software is really needed on income tax portals. For example, in India, about four to five crore people, uh, you know, which is basically about 40 to 50 million people um, uh, file income tax returns every year. Okay. Now, uh, of course, the income tax department doesn't have so many employees. So essentially, if you have to verify a random sample of these guys, uh, by auditing them, you must know which people to pick up in this random sample, those guys which have a high probability of cheating, right? So to do that prediction, you need some software. Now, of course, a 20 years per old person, you know, experienced person would come up with this kind of business logic saying that, hey, if the refund was not due, uh, you know, uh, or the refund was due, then no way that he would be cheating. He basically needs to give, uh, you know, uh, he has a refund due, so why would he be cheating in that sense, right? So, but if the refund was not due and the marital status is single or divorced and the income is high, good chances that he could cheat. Okay. So this, this kind of business logic is already present in this experienced person, in the brain of this experienced person. But machine learning engineer approaches the problem in a different way. The machine learning engineer says that, well, this, this data is there. Can I derive patterns from this? And can I extract this business logic automatically? Okay. So that's about machine learning. You know, it's sort of a magic where you have the data and you derive the business logic automatically, right? And therefore learn something called as models. Okay. okay. So now if you want to basically start, get started with machine learning, the most popular programming language these days is Python. Okay? So essentially, uh, you know, the first step towards doing machine learning uh, uh, in, as, as hands-on is to actually install Python. And better to install it through Anaconda installation. So, you know, go to this website, download Anaconda. Uh, usually uh, uh, 3.7 version is better. Uh, the 2.x version also exists, but it's going to be deprecated in a year or so. Okay, so therefore go ahead with the new version. Okay, and uh, essentially there are a bunch of things that Anaconda supplies, right? So uh, Jupyter notebooks, uh, NumPy, SciPy packages, uh, and visualization packages like Bokeh and so on. Um, um, you know, deep learning packages like H2O, typical machine learning packages like Scikit-Learn uh, and TensorFlow and so on. So, um, you know, various kinds of packages that this uh, uh, Anaconda installation would provide to you, uh, which will help you do various kinds of machine learning. Okay. So apart from theory, uh, you know, machine learning is 90% programming, 10% of math. So don't worry about the math component. I know lots of people don't like math, so it's not too much of math. But if you're good in programming, that's good enough to do machine learning. And that said, you know, the, recently there are tools like Azure ML, uh, which uh, help you do machine learning even without knowing programming. So even if you don't know programming, but can just drag drop and know what you are doing, then you can actually do machine learning as well. Okay. 
So a typical machine learning solution is very much similar to a software engineering solution. So it follows similar kinds of steps like a software development life cycle. Okay? So you need to have data, you need to be able to explore the data, something called as exploratory data analysis. You need to be able to define features on the data. For example, here we define three features, refund, marital status, taxable income. Okay. Uh, then you need to do training or build the model. So essentially, you know, this step of taking the training data with the labels and coming up with this kind of a decision tree is called training or training the model. Okay. And then evaluate. So finally, of course, everything should be evaluated that how well you have done. So the accuracy is what you can get by doing evaluation. Okay. So all in all, you know, machine learning process is the cycle of experimentation. You start off with exploratory data analysis, then you do feature engineering, model tuning, model training, right? And then you deploy the model, uh, compute the accuracy, um, you know, get the feedback from, from, from its users, and then continuously improve, keep on improving um, as you get more and more data. Okay. So that's what, in a nutshell, machine learning is. So if you have not gotten started to machine learning so far, this is the time to start. Machine learning is hot right now. And therefore, just join the ride and, uh, and start learning machine learning.